Hello, this week's video has a lot to cover. There's Cyclone Alfred, where that beast is likely to go, southeast Queensland, northeast New South Wales, late next week into next weekend. We go through the guidance and show you how to know when we have higher confidence in where that beast is likely to hit. Also, the autumn outlook is up. We go through the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, the waters around Australia to work out what is most likely to happen this year. So grab a cup of tea, settle in, and I'll walk you through everything that's happening. Hello and welcome to this Jane's Weather Update. It is the last day of summer. It is February 28th. We do have Cyclone Alfred that is off the coast. This is going to be a problem for us for at least the next week, even though it has already existed for quite some time. So that one is something to keep an eye on. Otherwise, we've got a broad ridge of high pressure which is running across the south. That is keeping things fairly dry. So all of the action is in Queensland. This is what we're looking like this morning. You can see that we really haven't had some big falls in through here, even though we had a rain band and move through. This cyclone well off the coast, here it is now, staying off the coast, moving away from the coast, but potentially coming back next weekend, so a full week away. But there's very limited confidence in where that's going to go at this stage. All right, let's have a look at what she's going to happen each day as we go day by day. So you're looking here for our AI forecast and we've got what day it is down through here. So let me just move that out of the way. We've got Friday at 11 p.m. This is our AI forecast. We've got all of the individual models as well, but we'll start with this one. So here's the cyclone. Now, I know the boundary of that is just off to the east there. This is something that's going to be changed. It is driving me crazy, but you can you can work with me with this here. All right, so there is our cyclone off the coast. Let's watch what it is doing. Here is our ridge high pressure that is running across the south. We've got a trough that's running in through here. We've got a very very light rain band that is moving across from the west right through into the southeast. And let me just put Tasmania back in the picture there. Okay. All right, there is our ridge. So that is Friday. Let's move ahead to Saturday. There is our cyclone sitting in through here off the coast. We've got a trough running down through here. There's the leftover very light rain that really doesn't add up to anything in through there. And then we're going to see a system coming across the southeast. So here is Sunday. It produces just a little bit of wet weather in southern Victoria, a little bit in Tasmania, and there's the next high pressure system that is coming in. Again, Cyclone Alfred still well off the coast. A little bit of a trough running down in through here. So let's go into Monday. There's the cool change that comes across the southwest there. High pressure moving in through here by the end of the day, the cyclone off the coast. Yes, we're now starting to see with that high in through here, onshore winds. So all of these areas here do have some wet weather. It's nothing heavy at this stage. That's Monday next week. Moving into Tuesday, continuing with that onshore airflow and the showers coming in. Cyclone well off the coast. We've got high pressure that's coming in through here and now sitting out to the east. So that is heat into the southeast. There's Tuesday. Moving into Wednesday, there is our cyclone. You can see it there. We've got a ridge of high pressure that's running in through here. So heat in the southeast. Moving into Thursday next week. High starting to move through, just a very weak disturbance that moves across the southeast. So that is on Sunday and then again on Thursday if you're in the southeastern parts of the country with a bit of a temperature roller coaster in between those two. Here is the cyclone. Let's now focus on this one. We are a full week away now, so confidence is low. Let's just have a look at what that might do. This is the AI model which takes into account all of the different guidance. Then we'll unpack each of those. So here we have Friday. Precipitation increasing along that coastline in through there. Let's zoom in and have a look at these guys. So let's just move that in there. That's Friday. Saturday, potential center up here, potential center down through here. The guidance is splitting. It's not in consensus. So that means there is a huge area that could be affected by this wet weather coming in. So that's on Saturday. Moving into Sunday, still up here and down in through here. So there's a large area that it might be hitting. And it's not every model that likes it actually hitting the coast either. So very low confidence at this stage. And this is a full week and a bit away. So this is next Sunday. Let's have a look at what that means in terms of wet weather total. So not a lot going on across the rest of the country. Yes, the usual activity up in the top end, but nothing overly exciting up through there for this time of year. Here is where the action is. And let's zoom in. And it does depend if that cyclone or low pressure system by the time it gets there perhaps actually makes a crossing of the coast comes near enough to have an impact but this year could be some huge rainfall so there's the potential there it is something to watch as we get closer let's move back in through here and have a look at some different models so we'll move back to let's start with about wednesday next week and we'll go with the gfs 
that one goes out a little bit slightly so that's really nice have a look at this we've got wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday no hint of that going anywhere near the coast the usa model likes to keep it offshore it perhaps has a hint of it coming back as we move into sunday all right that's the first scenario let's go back to wednesday and we'll go down to the euro model here it is there we are wednesday thursday friday saturday so this one has it going north Sunday, there it has it crossing, crossing coast. This is a full week and a bit away, so the confidence is very low. This is one of the outcomes that we have on the guidance this morning. So that's from the Euro model. Let's go back to Wednesday and we'll go to the access model, which is the Australian one. There it is, Wednesday. Thursday, that has an earlier crossing. It's got it right there in between Brisbane and Gold Coast. It's also got it being fairly powerful as it crosses the coast. So that's Thursday. Watch this. Friday, watch this. Saturday, let's go and pop back out over the ocean again and then potentially come back in again on Sunday. So this model has got two actual crossings of the coast. That is actually highly unlikely that it would actually turn out like that, but it is one of the possibilities. It's one of the scenarios that we do need to consider. And this one has the action ramping up earlier. That is from Thursday onwards. Okay, let's have a look at the last one, which is GEM, which is the Canadian model. There it is off the coast on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that has rain moving a lot further inland, not as much moving further south, but that has a crossing back up here, so more just north of the Sunshine Coast there. So different range of outcomes of what all the different modelling is doing. When they're not saying the same thing, we're not in consensus and we don't have high confidence in where that's going to go. So always important to keep an eye on what that guidance is suggesting. All right, let's have a look at what that means in terms of wet weather. This is next week. So Monday the 3rd through to Monday the 10th. Yes, as you would expect, these are the areas that have the potential for higher levels of wet weather but for the rest of the country is looking very dry so drier than average as we move through next week there's just no real instability there's no moisture source it's all the action is in through here it has white parts for here because there might be something that sets up there thanks to a trough and that may move inland so that's just taking into account the possibilities of those ones in through there I'm not talking the cyclone I'm talking the leftover rain that comes with them once they cross the coast so that's next week let's now have a look at what the temperature is for that yes you would expect it to be cooler with that big beast that is just off the coast there and the cloud and wind that is associated with that but the rest of it it is looking above average temperature roller coaster as always in the south but if you're inland those cool changes have a very limited effect in the southwest we are seeing a couple of them come through which will have a bigger impact let's move back to week two so let's have a look at the 10th of march through to the 17th starting to see some greens in through here that will be very lovely if that actually comes off a very very dry part of the world at the moment so let's keep an eye on whether that's a thing. We'll uh, revisit that next Friday. Otherwise, drier pattern in through here from Monday the 10th onwards and otherwise fairly brown across much of the country. Browns to white, so 50-50. Having a look at the temperature associated with that, so week two starting on the 10th, it's got onshore winds for Queensland there, so it's cooler than average, but still lots of heat across all of these parts, maybe not quite into the southwest. So two weeks ahead, we're looking at higher than average temperatures across much of the country unless you've got those cool changes in the southwest and right at that south coast or being affected by that cyclone all right let's have a look at mjo what is this again it is our man and julian oscillation it's a pulse of energy that travels around the tropics why do we care when it is here in the australian region which is the green zone here then it enhances that to access to moisture that we have and it enhances the instability going on you can get a cyclone, obviously, we've got one off the coast now without this being here, but generally across that northern part of Australia, it suppresses the wet weather. You saw that in the north, there wasn't that much activity as opposed to what you'd get in a normal summer week. And why? Because it's all the way over here now. At the moment, it's weak, but the forecasting is showing for the next couple of weeks, it's likely to stay away from us. So no tropical influence to enhance that wet weather, to enhance that moisture 
And if you can get a cold front or trough or low to come in and connect with that, that can do some good things in terms of rain, not while it is on the other side of the world. We need that to be in the green zone to make that happen. It doesn't guarantee rain it gets here. It just suggests that if there is a low meeting up with that uh, with that moisture, then wherever that travels, that's what is going to get an enhanced rainfall from that. All right, let's have a look at our sea surface temperature anomaly. We have had some changes on this map in the last week or two. The blues that are in through here have weakened. The blues that were in through here have definitely weakened. So that is a situation at this time of year in the Indian Ocean, it's still heavily um, dominated by what the monsoon is doing. So this may not be representative of where we are heading. Better to look at the forecast for that one there. Lots and lots of warm water all in through here, right around Australia. All of that is warmer than average. So if we have an onshore airflow and it runs into low pressure, that enhances the wet weather we have. Doesn't matter what the MJO is doing, doesn't matter what La Nina or El Nino is doing, doesn't matter what the Indian Ocean is doing. That is a source of moisture if we can get it to interact with that low pressure. Let's have a look at the Pacific. We've got all of this blue in through here. This is the current La Nina that we are in. We've got all of our warm water off here, which is offsetting that. It's creating an imbalance, and so it pushes that moisture towards Australia. Let's have a look at where that's likely to go. So here is our La Nina that we're in. We're starting to come out of that. Like to be in neutral for the next couple of months. It's the natural progression out of a La Nina. And then this is suggesting that we're likely to go up as the year goes on. Does that cross the line into El Nino? We don't know yet. It's still too far away. So that's what the Pacific Ocean is doing. Currently sending us moisture, about to go back to being 50-50, not really pushing it anywhere, potentially going over to the other side where it suppresses the moisture from the Pacific. Okay, let's have a look at the Indian Ocean. That's saying exactly the opposite. So at this time of year, it doesn't tell us anything, but as we go into autumn, it certainly does tell us stuff. And we saw with all of that warm water off the coast there, that should be a good thing. If we can end up with cooler water over in that box on the other side, then it sets up an imbalance. That's the dipole and it pushes that moisture towards us. We have the moisture that would help enhance the moisture and really push it here as well. Now that, as we go through autumn, is not likely to be helping us, but as we go through winter, it may be. So that's something to keep an eye on for that one. All right, in terms of the outlooks, this is for March. It was issued by the Bureau a couple of days ago and it's got a lot of brown in there through Queensland. Now, if this cyclone does cross the coast, that completely uh, makes that not even remotely a, a source of guidance that you should be looking at. Um, so yeah, if it's in the southeast here and we do actually get that coastal crossing, do not, uh, we are going to have incredibly above average rainfall with that as it moves through. So ignore that there. This one here may be meaning something. We do know that the MJO is away for the majority of March. So that may mean that there isn't as much activity over Queensland. Now having a look up through here and you can see some greens that are trickling down into the southeast. It's a very weak situation, but if you kind of move the tea leaves, you can sort of see that pattern there, right? And so that would indicate that we might get a feed of moisture coming in from the northwest. We know we've got all those warm waters off the coast there. And if it can connect with a trough or cold front or even a cutoff low, you get that juicy northwest cloud band that may actually deliver some wet weather. So this is hinting at that situation at some point during March. If we move ahead to April, different situation, a lot more greens coming back. We know that the NJO at the end of March is sort of heading back in this direction. Is it about to do another stint over here? Maybe. Let's have a look back on that rainfall. So here we have for April, there's a lot of green in through here. That's a classic trough setting up through the eastern states, delivering on one side and not delivering on the other, but it depends where that trough actually sits. Across the southeast, it's just 50-50, no strong guidance either way. We do have stuff that is happening over in the southwest, so that's interesting. Is it a nice autumn break over there? We've got all of this up here indicating there is warm water off the coast, warmer than average, enhanced moisture that could be able to do something if there is low pressure in the area. And one more is the season as a whole, March to May. That does take into account all of those brown tones that we saw in the March thing here. And it does have some brown that is in through here. So that's not a great outlook for these parts of the country that did not do well at all last year either in terms of rainfall. 
Okay. Let's have a look at a bit of a jump around the country. I'll spend a bit more time on Brisbane because there is a lot that is happening here. Not yet. Sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. There's just the odd little shower that's coming in as we move through here. By the time we get to about Wednesday, that's when we might start to see some activity from what is happening still well offshore. It's only one to two models really that have anything there and it's nothing heavy at this stage. That's Wednesday. Let's move into Thursday. The range here is 0.2 to 43. So that indicates there's a large spread in between those weather models and we saw that that was the case. We're going to see through here we've got 0.2, we've got 0, we've got 0 on those as the bottom range because we know that that USA model did not have it coming across the coast whereas the other three did. So keep that in the back of your mind as you're having a look at this guidance. If there's a 0 there that is one model they're saying nope this is not going to happen. Keep up to date with it, have a look at the new forecast as they come in and see whether it has changed its tune. What we're looking for here is consensus amongst them all. When you've got that, we then shift into higher confidence that this is likely to happen. At the moment, just a potential. All right, so there is Thursday. Let's move ahead to Friday, 0 to 114 millimetres. That's a massive spread because the models are doing different things. And into Saturday, 0 to 147 millimetres, all dependent on where that cyclone or if it's uh, downgraded to just a normal tropical low by that stage, where that actually goes. All right, so big week ahead for Brisbane. Keep an eye on Alfred. Have a look at the latest guidance on what the path is likely to be see if we are in the area it is moving. All right, let's move down to Sydney. Here we go at the moment. We've got nothing much happening. We've got the high kicking out over into the Tasman. That pushes onshore winds, so we end up with the enhanced shower activity. Not today, not tomorrow, maybe starting on Sunday as we're moving through there. Later on Sunday, heading into Monday, showers streaming through thanks to those southerly winds or southeasterly uh, in the weather pattern. Moving into Tuesday, potential for activity, and here, there's no real day that has has huge amounts, not like what's happening further north with the cyclone, but this is still an enhanced activity in terms of those showers and thunderstorms as they come in. Next Friday, have a look at this one. It is the, um, here we go, we'll actually bring it out. You can see it's the Australian model, that access model. That's the yellow one in through there. That is the one with the heavier falls, 79 millimetres. You saw that it came in, went out, and then it's potentially coming back in again and potentially um, extending an influence as far south as Sydney. So that's something to keep an eye on. At the moment, it's only one model. The other ones do not like it at all. All right, let's move down to Melbourne, where it is fairly boring as we move through the end of the week here. It's just mild. We've got the heat, and the heat in the north of the state. We've got mild conditions in the south. So in the mid-20s, mix of sun and clouds. Saturday, very similar. Moving into Sunday, that's when the next very weak disturbance moves through. So there may be some light showers that come in from that one. It's not going to add up to very much at all. We do get a cooler break, 22 and 22, Sunday and Monday. Temperatures jump up again as we go into Tuesday, the next high kicking out over the Tasman Sea. So we're back into the low to mid 30s. And then there is the chance of another disturbance coming through next Thursday. Again, it's just one real model that has it here. There's nothing heavy with that one. We're not connected to that cyclone yet, at least in the next 10 days, we're not seeing any connection in this part of the world. All right, having a look at Adelaide, where it is even drier. There is sunshine every single day, and there is not even a hint of any wet weather coming in. In terms of temperature, as we start the new months and the new season, we are mild across the weekend. We've got a little bit of heat Tuesday and Wednesday, but it's nothing extreme. We've got a bit of a dip in through there, but it doesn't really have any big impact in terms of coldness with that next disturbance coming through mid to late next week. Having a look over at Perth, again, not a lot of wet weather, but what are we looking at in terms of temperature roller coaster? Let's go through that. Warmer Wednesday, hot into Thursday, and then the next change comes in. Why is my mouse not working here? And that would be why. Here we are, I'm on the wrong days. On Saturday, this is, let's start by working backwards today. Right, Saturday, 31, 34. Then the change comes in on Monday. Then we heat up again. The next change comes through at the end of next week. There's nothing strong in behind those. It is only March and there's hardly any wet weather with them either. All right, that is the update for today, for this week. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea on 
At least, let's monitor what Cyclone Alfred is doing, what the path is likely to be. When you see those numbers coming closer together, you know we've got higher confidence in what the outlook is. In terms of what's happening in the broader picture, we know the MJO away from us, so not enhancing that activity. If you're looking for rain in the south, that is not good news for us at the moment. If you're looking for rain in the south as we go through the year ahead, Looks like the Pacific is likely to send the moisture away from us as we go through the year, but the Indian Ocean may send it towards us. However, we have this incredibly warm Tasman Sea that is still here, and even when we have El Nino, i.e. pushing that moisture away in the, in the Pacific Ocean, we can still get that as a source like we saw with the last one. So that's the current situation. I'll see you next week.